Welcome to Cyber GMBC. April is the month in which showers will bring flowers. And we are praying for God to shower down blessings that will bloom in our ministry. We will introduce our wellness center three days a week. We will have our starting date later this month. Our prayer is that the sermons and worship experience will be inspirational as well as transformational. We welcome you to our Cyber GMBC worship experience. And if the Lord has done anything for you, you ought to praise him this morning. Amen. The scripture says we enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Amen. Amen. To want to say welcome to those that are streaming with us this morning. We welcome you to our GMBC morning worship service. And even though you're not in the house this morning, we feel that you will be connected and we are peacock proud, as our pastor would say, that you chose to engage with us this morning. So we hope that something that we say, a song that is sung, and even though we can't give you a hug, we give you a hug in the spirit. Amen? Amen. For the Lord is good and he mercy endureth forever. Amen. Our scripture for this morning. Wherefore, thou art great, O Lord God, for there is none like thee, neither is there any God beside thee, according to all that we have heard with our ears. And what one nation in the earth is like thy people, even like Israel, whom God went to redeem for a people to himself, and to make him a name, and to do for you great things and terrible for thy land before thy people, which thou redeemest to thee from Egypt, from the nations and their gods. For thou hast confirmed to thyself thy people Israel, to be a people unto thee forever, and thou, Lord, art become their God. And now, O Lord God, the word that thou hast spoken concerning thy servant and concerning his house, establish it forever and do as thou hast said. And let thy name be magnified forever, saying, The Lord of hosts is the God over Israel, and let the house of thy servant David be established before thee. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. And right where he had the name Israel, let us say believers in God. Right where he had the name David, insert your name. Amen. Say Karen. Because when you read the scripture, you should make it personal. Amen. Amen. For the Lord, he is good and his mercy endure forever. And he is a way maker. He's a promise keeper, and he's a light that shines in the darkness. Amen? The, the psalmist said he's a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Amen? Amen. And we didn't make it this far on our own, but we made it this far by faith. Amen? Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before your presence this morning and praise and thanksgiving. Thank you for this day, our daily bread. Father, we lift our voice in praise to you because it is written in the word that when we lift you up, you will draw all men unto you. So we come this morning, Lord, to praise your name for all that you have done, all that you are doing, and all that you will do in our lives and the lives of those that we love. Father, we ask that your presence be with us this morning. We welcome you into this place this morning, Lord, for without you, we can do nothing. So we offer up a worship this morning, Lord, and we pray that you receive it in the name of Jesus. We ask that you just permeate our hearts with your love, fill us up, 
to overflow. Yes, Father, let it flow from every mountaintop, every place that our feet trod, because in your word you said that every place that our feet trod, you would give it unto us. So, Father, we just ask in the name of Jesus, and by the power of his precious blood, that every place that our feet tried, we take victory in Jesus' name. Jesus. We ask that, yes. Father, you just pour out your wisdom on our pastor this morning as he brings forth the word, Father. Fall afresh on him. Fill him up, Lord, with your Holy Spirit. And as he sends the word that you have for us today, we pray, oh God, that we not only be hearers, but doers of the word. Yes. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. 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 And amen. 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 Good morning, everyone. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is good, isn't he? Oh, can you give God a hand clap of praise this morning? He's good. He woke us up this morning, started us on our way. Hallelujah. He, he let us arrive to the church house safe this morning. God is good. And I love to praise him. Anybody love to praise him? Anybody love to praise him this morning? Yes. Yes. I love to praise him. He's a good God. I love to praise him. Middle 
but yet so strong. Hallelujah, the sweetest name I know. He's a good God. And he is here. We thank him for his presence. There's a sweet anointing in this sanctuary. In this sanctuary, which is his sanctuary, there is a stillness in the atmosphere some of us are dealing with sicknesses with bereavement but whatever it is come and lay down your burdens for he is here he's going to take care of them there is a sweet there is a sweet Anointing in the sanctuary, there is a stillness in the atmosphere.
Hope you get 
Lord, we thank you for your ability to speak to us, to give us direction and instructions. Lord, we are at that time again when we need to hear from you. And Lord, unless you speak through me, there is no word for us. So Lord, I'm asking you to take my mind and think your thoughts. Take my words and be your words, Lord. Use me in spite of me. Of all the flaws and shortcomings there is in me, Lord, look beyond all of them and see the needs that have gathered here this morning, Lord. Lord, we want to be better when we leave out than we were when we arrived. And it only happens through the anointed preaching of your gospel. And Lord, we ask you to let it rest on us. These and all other blessings we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, before we read scripture, um, there's youth church in the basement. And so we're asking those whose youth will be participating um, that they may be excused at this time. Amen. Any of our young people, 18 and down. 18 to potty train. Amen. Amen. That's where it stops. Amen. 18 to potty train. Amen. 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 As our young folks, uh, it's a blessing to have young people in church. Amen. 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 So many of us um, came that way and we're still here. Amen. So obviously it wasn't as bad as folks told us it was. Amen. And I don't know now, some of us get grown and act like our kids don't matter. Amen. Let me say that again. Some of us get grown and act like our kids don't matter by the way that we treat their souls. Amen. We can buy them expensive Jordan gym shoes for their feet, but won't give them Jesus for their soul. That's a sermon for another day, amen. But there is a word this morning. Um, I'm going to be more pastor, more pastoral this morning than usual um, because I think that there are times where we, I just need to have a good conversation with you all, and this morning happens to be one of those days. Amen. So I hope you got a lot of your praise in and a lot of your worship in. Because I promise you, this sermon will not have you feeling that good. Amen. But it's necessary. The gospel recording of St. John, 19th chapter, beginning at the 25th verse, it reads this way. Standing near the cross where Jesus' mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene, when Jesus saw his mother standing there beside the disciple he loved, he said to her, Dear woman, here is your son. And he said to this disciple, Here is your mother. And from then on, this disciple took her into his home. I want to simply use for a thought from which to preach the other talk, preparing to leave. The other talk preparing to leave. My brothers and sisters, within our community, whenever we hear the talk, the first thing that comes to mind is a conversation that African American parents must have with our children concerning potential interactions with the police. Sadly, when we dreamed that the need for this conversation would be on the decline following the murder of George Floyd, it has not gone so far. In Mississippi, January 2023, six former Rankin County Sheriff deputies, Brett McClacken, Christian DeMond, Jeff Middleton, Hunter Ed Oddward, Daniel Opdyke, and Joshua Hartfield pleaded guilty to abusing and torturing two brothers, Michael Jenkson and Eddie Parker. Now these two brothers were attacked by the goon squad whom they called themselves because they received, the goon squad received a call that there were brothers living with a European American woman in Braxton, Mississippi. 
When the goon squad arrived, they beat them, assaulted them with a stun gun and a sex toy, shot Jenkins in the mouth in a racially motivated crime. Just last month, Dexter Reed was shot at 96 times by Chicago to peak police for allegedly shooting an officer during a traffic stop for not wearing a seat belt. Of course, he's gone, but the thing that's more intriguing is that the SUV he was driving was a heavenly tinted car. Y'all didn't catch that. He was stopped because he did not have his seat belt on, but the windows were so tinted you couldn't see the seat belt in the first place. Now, my brothers and sisters, it is allegedly that he had a gun, a gun was found on the scene, and he had shot at a police officer, and perhaps he wanted to die by suicide, but I still think that 96 shots are a little excessive. The concern and fear is that it might get worse if full immunity is given to all police officers as suggested if there is a return of 45 to the White House. It has gotten so bad that my mother has bought dash cans for my brother and me, and we are grown married with children. This is the talk, but this morning we want to address the other talk that does not discriminate or only deal with certain ethnicities. This talk must be had regardless of your area or zip code because it will evolve you sooner or later. Very few of us really spend much time properly planning for an event that will happen. Two weeks ago, we celebrated Resurrection Sunday and the joy of Jesus living forever. However, before we get too far from Resurrection Sunday, I want us to learn a lesson that Jesus taught us on Good Friday about preparation. Last week, we revisited Holy Week and the event that led to Jesus being crucified, but I was led to go back to Good Friday for today's sermon. See, the only way to avoid death is not to be born. For everyone and everything that is born will eventually die. So today's sermon is an encouragement for all of us to put some plans in place for not only our death, but also our possible dying process. And I'm emphasizing the possible dying process because the reality is, is that most of us have no idea exactly how we are going to die or whether or not we will suffer in the process. Ten years ago, while participating in a symposium with the Henry Ford Health System titled Advanced Planning for End of Life, it became clear that I must preach this sermon frequently. Then after engaging in caregiver's ministry sessions this year, it was confirmation. This is a sermon that those who have not started a family need to hear, as well as those of us who are family. The Lord laid me to, led me to this sermon at the end of life, and it makes sense because nothing can tear a family apart like death of a loved one. How many of us want to go to heaven? How many of us know the way to heaven? The way is simple. Accept Jesus as your Savior and forgiver of your sins and live your life following in his footsteps to the best of your ability. But you know, I have discovered that we all want to go to heaven, but we don't want to die to get there. <laughs> Death actually completes the cycle of life. Death also brings eternity. If you haven't accepted Jesus, then death brings an eternity of suffering and punishment for dying in your sins. If you have accepted Jesus, then death brings an eternity of joy and paradise for allowing Jesus to pay for your sins. The reality is that all of us will eventually die one day. 
No matter how many fountains of youth you bathe in, no matter how many vitamins you take, no matter how many oxygen tanks you sleep in, eventually you will die. And I would love to live a long life to enjoy getting old with my wife and watching D3 get married and make me a grandfather who can enjoy my grandchildren. But I also realize that this earth is not my final home. And if I want to see Jesus and live with him in the accomplishments he spoke of in John 14, I've got to leave this planet. Today is the third year of my pastor uncle and godfather, Pastor Stargell, when he made his transition. And the only way that I can fellowship with him again is in heaven. So unless one is suicidal or works in the industry, the thought of your demise and life without you does not sit too well. Often seniors begin to accept that their bodies aren't what they used to be and that death is a reality that they will probably face sooner than later. However, for one who is in the prime of their life, the concept of dying is perhaps the furthest thing from their minds. Well, as your pastor, I must share a reality with you. Most folks whose bodies are currently in the funeral homes, really hadn't planned on being there at this moment. While I don't want this sermon to be totally morbid, I must share the truth with you and state that we all will leave here one day and someday. Your day may not be my day, and my day may not be your day, and your day may be before my day, or maybe my day is before your day, but rest assured that both your day and my day have already been ordered. Since the gift of life has already been given to us, we must acknowledge that the gift of death will one day also visit us. Life is a strange bird because you usually don't know when it's going to happen, begin, nor do you know when it's going to end. Over the years, I've been asked the question, Dr. D, what's the difference between a funeral and a home going? Glad you asked. A funeral is defined as the observations held for a dead person, usually before burial or cremation. In one sense, everyone will have a funeral and a service for one who has died. Well, a home-going service as, is defined as the celebration of a life that has been promoted from this life to eternal life. Another way of looking at the two is that when you are in Christ, when you die, although there will be sadness, the solace is in the fact that you are now living with the Lord in heaven. This is seen as a home going because you are going to the place that Jesus spoke of in John 14. Now, if you decide to leave here and have not established a relationship with Jesus, then all that others can do is mourn the physical death and spiritual death because the Bible says the wages of sin pays death, but the gift of God is eternal life. However, if you choose not to accept the gift that you are without a Savior, it doesn't matter if they bring you in this church or any other church, what has been done has been done. As a matter of fact, the oldest book in the New Testament and Paul's first writing to, is to the Thessalonians, or Thessalonians, was written to answer some serious questions about life after death. Paul confronts them by assuring them that if by chance they died before Jesus returned, that they would not be forgotten, but would sh he would surely rise, and they would rise first. So we must all understand that being a Christian is actually engaging in the other talk. By now, some of you are in the sanctuary are thinking about mentally checking out, and those in virtual sanctuary is clicking off because this sermon has you very very uncomfortable. After all, you didn't expect to hear about death two Sundays after Resurrection Sunday 2024. Well, can I give it to you this way? Aesop tells the story of an old lion and the fox. 
And no lion whose teeth and claws were so worn that he was no longer able, it was no longer as easy for him to get food as it was in his younger days. And he pretended to be sick in his younger days. And so what ends up happening is he broadcast to everyone and then would lie down in his cave to wait for visitors. And when they came to offer him their sympathy, he ate them up. Well, one day a fox came to the cave of the old lion, but was very cautious about his encounter with the old lion. Uh, standing at a safe distance from the entrance of the cave, he politely inquired about the health of the lion. The old lion told the fox that he was very sick and asked the fox to step in for a moment. But the fox wisely stayed outside while thinking, thanking the old lion for that kind invitation. I should be glad to do as you ask, but I have noticed that there are many footprints leading into the cave and none coming out. Then the fox asked the question, how do your visitors find their way out again? Well, let me unpack this story and apply it to our message today. The fox realized that unless he did something different, then the others before him, he would also end up with the same fate that fell upon the others who went in the cave before him. Mr. Fox was able to learn from the tragic experience of others that if he didn't have a way out of the cave, he wasn't going to go into the cave. Mr. Fox learned that life will teach you lessons if you're willing to learn from life's experiences. Mr. Fox had discovered that those before him hadn't properly planned their escape from the cave and therefore they became victims in the cave. I think I'm saying something. And all I'm trying to say this morning is that Mr. Fox was willing to have the other talk before he entered the cave. Mr. Fox was willing to have the other talk before he encountered the possibility of death. Well, you're asking yourself, Dr. D, this sounds pretty intriguing, but why, 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 why? As one who's been preaching for 41 years in pastoral ministry for the last 28 years and nearly here 22 years at GNBC, I have seen some things. When folks have entered the final process of dying and death, to be unprepared is often more tragic than dying itself. When I reflect upon how many bedsides I have been at and how many family arguments have broken out during the reality of death, I can honestly testify that when things are in order, it runs a whole lot smoother. When one has died, particularly unexpectedly, it can bring a serious burden to the family and those left behind. I believe that when one is born again, the Lord gives them some indication of when their time is near. There have been too many instances where persons had done some things they normally would not do, but made certain they did it this one last time for some strange reason. I recall the last time I saw my big brother, he had come up from Atlanta and he made an effort to visit as many family members in the state as possible. He spent extra days here in order to see and visit everyone he could before he went back to Atlanta because that would be the last time he would see them. Well, if you think about it, one of the reasons that I am a Christian is because I wanted to be prepared for life after death. Some folks don't believe that there is life after death. Well, I'll simply say I'm willing to live my life on the Just In Case program. I mean, I I'm willing to believe in Jesus and live my life accordingly just in case there is life after death because I'm not willing to take that gamble. So it's based on my experiences and the reality that many of us have not made the proper preparations for something that will happen to us one day, if not today. And if I'm going to preach about strengthening our families, I must address one of the most trying moments that can either bring the family together or tear it apart. As husbands and wives, you should 
we should unselfishly think about how our spouse will be able to survive without us and the burden your loss will have on your family. So I'll say this again. If you are living, you need to have a life insurance policy. Somewhere that's paid up with the current benefactors in place. You need to put something in place now that will ensure that your spouse will be financially able to carry on and provide the goals that you have set for your children. Do, don't leave it up to someone else. Take the responsibility and do this now. Don't leave your family in the financial hole because you are not thinking about them beyond your living. I am sick and tired of someone passing and then the next thing we see is a GoFundMe account. Now y'all think I'm being mean, but I'm being real. Take care, fund yourself, and take care of your family by purchasing a life insurance policy. If you smoke cigarettes, you can afford a policy. If you got two or three cell phones, you can afford a policy. If you play the lottery every week, you can afford a policy. You go to the casino, you can afford a policy. You gonna gamble. Hello, somebody. See, I do understand that a conversation about life without you is intimidating, but trust me, it's real and it happens someday. I know this is hard and perhaps uncomfortable to digest this morning. I remember my dear maternal grandmother who would call my mother over to help her get things in order. She would call my mother to call and she'd come over and she'd call an attorney and then so she could put things in place. However, every time my mother would go over to my grandmother's house to call the attorney, my grandmother would then say to her, don't rush me off the scene. Everyone should have a trust or will. Whether you are married or not, whether you have children or not, you should have something in place that will carry out your wishes if and when you leave here. Also, everyone should have some instructions on how they would like to die if the dying process is not as simple as never waking up from your sleep. I think most of us would love to go that way, just go to sleep and never wake up and wake up in eternity, but it don't always happen that way. Let me say this with all sincerity. If there is no one left that you trust or will leave something to, leave it to the church. Now, y'all looking at me a little strange. Let me say this. A lot of churches have been blessed by those who tied even in their death to make certain that others benefit from their death. I think I just said something. See, in the past, we thought the best way to do this was to have a pew with our name on it. And that way folk can remember who we was, but the reality was that often became fighting issues because there were certain folks who thought that because their family's name was on the pew, that was their pew. And how dare you sit your behind in that pew because that's the pew that recognizes my mama or my daddy. So we got away from all that stuff. If you really want to leave behind something, I dare you to have a designated fund, an endowment, or a scholarship so others can benefit from you being here. And no, I'm not begging because y'all know I don't play Al Green or keep sweat. But I am being real in our community. Our churches usually have to help bury folks. But in other communities, churches are blessed when folks make their transition. That's why you can have some churches with eight folk and they keep operating year after year. Not because these folk, eight folk are tithing so well, but because others have gone on and have remembered the church so that the legacy could continue on even when they gone. And let me say this, it happens here. We have several GMBC's individuals who've been sainted, who left something for GMBC after they graduated from earth to heaven. For our young parents, you need to seriously consider 
who you will entrust your children to live with in the event of an unexpected and untimely death. I'm coming, every, I'm coming out on every street. See, I'm talking about having the other talk and understand all areas, sitting down and thinking about how you would like things to occur when you leave this earth. Because there have been many parents who hadn't planned on leaving their children anytime soon. They passed and then their children was passed along as a financial football because this person wanted them to have them so they get a few dollars for them. And then that person, you need to take time out now and decide if something happened to me today. Who will I trust to and care about my children and look out for their best welfare and not try to make money off of them being in their house? In our planning, our families or close friends should be considered. Many of us don't have families that we can truly depend on. It happens. Amen. And if that's the case, you should be able to find a friend who you can trust that will honor your wishes. GNBC, please, please, I am going to beg this time. Please, please, baby, please. Don't be afraid to have the other talk. And I don't mind getting experts to come here to help you plan. I would rather you be uncomfortable talking about it then than to be neglectful and doing nothing about it later. Because later it's going to be a whole lot more to deal with because you're going to have feelings, there's going to be emotion, there's going to be grief, and it's going to almost be a fight. Good death. What is a good death? I began this sermon mainly addressing death and what happens after your transition, but now I want to talk about the process of dying. The reality is, is that we have no clue exactly what will be our cause of death if and how long we will suffer. So now is the perfect time to begin to strongly consider having the other talk about your possible dying process. Again, as pastor, it's my responsibility to feed the sheep and prepare you for life, dying, death, and the afterlife. Over the years, I have been involved in many conferences that addressed how to be the most helpful in the dying process to ensure that persons have a Good death. Now I know that may, this may seem oxymoronic because you're probably thinking, Dr. D, how can you have a good death? Isn't it bad enough I'm dead? <laughs> how is that going to be a good death? The reality is, is that many persons have been, have had horrible deaths and I'm not only talking about falls, accidents, and the like, but I'm talking about prolonged suffering and the pain that we allow our loved ones to experience often without knowing, not intentionally. We often don't want to say goodbye, and we keep our loved ones suffering so that we can feel good about seeing them and not realizing that we're being selfish. I may not get any many amens, but I know I'm preaching. So I'm about to share with you some critical information that could inspire you to really have the other talk sooner rather than later. You need to learn about advanced directives, patient advocates, pain management and comfort, hospice care and palliative care. This is why. Although 70% of people say they would rather prefer to die at home around family, 70% of people die in a hospital, nursing home, or lone care facility. 80% of people say that if seriously ill, they want to talk to their doctor about end-of-life care. But only 7% actually reported having an end-of-life talk with their doctor. 82% of people say it's important to put their wishes in writing, but only 23% have actually done it. Often the factors that keep persons from having the other talk are being comfortable even talking about dying, emotions and fear, their age and having knowledge about what actually happens. No one plans on getting into a major car collision or having a tragic event cut their quality of life short, but they do happen. When you consider the dying process, many would prefer to have a quality of life 
over a quantity of years. While others would prefer to have a quality of years regardless of the quality of life. Some would want to be kept alive at all cost. Try every procedure, exhaust every possible means of keeping them alive, and if it means them becoming a vegetable, they'd rather be a live vegetable. However, there are others who see quality of life as being more important to them. They would rather go to be with the Lord than suffer and become a trophy where others can see and touch them but have no idea of the pain and suffering they are experiencing. When they can't enjoy life, they would rather be in the afterlife. Now, neither one is wrong. It is your choice, your decision, but it needs to be made known. Now is the time to have the other talk about your wishes and you decide whether or not you want CPR which gives best on which works best on the healthy and is given immediately and understand that the success rates for for the ill older or weak is only about 17% in the hospital and less than 3% in nursing homes also unless ribs are broken it's not considered a good CPR then the next you have to decide if you want artificial nutrition which involves putting tubes through your nose or at no abnormal wall to get the necessary fluids into your body to keep you from dehydrating. You have to decide if you want to live on life support that includes tube feeding, a ventilator, pacemaker, defibrillator, heart lung machine, and or dialysis. You have to decide if you want to have certain procedural procedures, to have certain um, antibiotics, to have comfort care in which the focus shifts away from life sustaining treatment to a concentration upon relief of discomfort. You have to decide if you want a DNR, do not resuscitation and allow natural death to occur. You have to decide if you want futile medical uh, uh, intervention where a medical intervention that does not lead to improvement in your prognosis, comfort, well-being, or general state of health. You have to decide if you want the futility of care because there is no longer hope that only any improvement will occur. You have to also decide if you want a blood transfusion of blood products in your body, if you want to donate organs or tissues, these decisions need to be your decisions. And you need to make your desires and wishes known now while you're still in your right mind. Please don't be so selfish that you would leave these decisions totally upon your family to make while they are dealing with the potential of losing you too. Amen. Having the other talk doesn't mean that you've thrown faith out the window, nor does it deny that God is still a miracle worker. What it does is put things in place and allow you to do your part because you will not leave here until God calls you in the first place. However, I do believe that one has the right to have some dignity as to having their wishes followed and desires made known. So as your pastor, I'm pleading with you to have the other talk with yourself and then with your loved ones. If necessary, I can invite professionals to come and speak about end of life issues with us very soon. Well, let me get to the text because some of y'all have heard this stuff. You're not too excited about what you've heard. You're thinking to yourself, I come to hear about life. and You're talking about death. But I want you to understand that if you live, you will die. And so I'm not going to act like that does not exist. But however, I do preach from the Bible. And so for those who didn't realize that I got a little scholarly uh, something to me, for many of you, you're trying to figure out, how is this a sermon? I got you now. <laughs> See... I do believe that we are to follow Jesus as our example. And if you believe that you are to follow Jesus, it just so happened that before Jesus died on Calvary, he also had the other talk. And although Jesus may not have mentioned any of these medical terms I just shared, and he had to endure suffering, remember that the flesh was weak and the spirit was willing in the garden for which our church is named Gethsemane.
Too many of us only see the riding on the donkey and folks praising him, but there was also a suffering side associated with Jesus. This text is usually only preached around resurrection time. Actually, it's one of the last seven sayings of Christ on the cross and is preached on Good Friday. This scene is the crucifixion, and Jesus has now reached Calvary, Skull Hill, or Golgotha. The soldiers had just divided up his clothes and threw dice to, for his robe, leaving him naked on the cross. John notes that five people have actually come to the cross with Jesus. Now, I'm a little baffled because he had at least 12 disciples, but somehow or another, only five showed up. He had at least 12 disciples who spent three and a half years with him, but there are only five folks with him at his darkest hour. The strange thing is that out of all the folk who follow Jesus, on his darkest day, there are only five people with him, and only one of them is a named disciple. Those standing with him are his mother, Mary, whose heart must have been tearing apart as she watched her firstborn in agony and punished for a crime he did not commit. Then there is Samot Smalley, his auntie and mother of James and John, was married to Zebedee, making John and, G John and James Jesus cousins. Then there is Mary, the wife of Cleophas, and then there is Mary Magdala, who we learned about on Resurrection Sunday, who was the first to see the risen Jesus and preach that he lived. Jesus is dying, but the third word of the seven is geared to teach us a lesson today. He's engaging in the other talk. Jesus is making the necessary accommodations for his family in his absence. He understands that he is leaving the scene, but before he leaves the scene, he shows his selflessness by making sure his mother is cared for, and he doesn't want to just leave it to someone else. He handles it himself. Oh, I, I, I like this. Jesus was the firstborn of Joseph and Mary, and tradition states that Joseph had already died because Joseph was actually old when Jesus was born, and therefore the responsibility of taking care of mama rested on Jesus. In that day, it was part of the honoring one's parents to provide for them in their old age. Mary was probably in her mid to late 40s, a widow, and lived in a society in which women rarely earn much money unless they sold their bodies. And so Mary is solely dependent on her oldest son who is now dying. And I know Jesus had other brothers and sisters. His brothers didn't accept him as their savior yet. And so they were behind in Galilee. Jesus had to deal with whom he trusts, who he could trust and depend on. And so his cousin John was standing there near his mother. Verse 26, he tells her, woman, he is your son. And this was not seen as disrespectful to call her woman in that day instead of mother. Then verse 27, he tells John, she is your mother now. Take care of her and make sure you treat her like you would your own mother. At a time when Jesus could have been selfish and only concerned about himself, he was concerned for others, not having a pity party, not feeling sorry for himself, but taking care of business. Perhaps he was letting us know that in life there will be challenging times, but we shouldn't be afraid to weep with one another. We should not be afraid to speak to one another. We should not be afraid to lean on one another. We should not be afraid to confide in one another. We should not be afraid to uphold one another. We should not be afraid to care for one another. We should not be afraid to pray for one another. We should not be afraid to be patient with one another. We should not be afraid to encourage one another. We definitely shouldn't be afraid to love one another. Jesus understands even even in dying, that his mother would hurt, his disciples would hurt, but he wanted them to know what his wishes were. And although his pain was severe, although his torture was unbearable, although his burden was exhausting, although his responsibility was great, although his heart was breaking, his battle was fierce, his time was short, he had not forgotten nor overlooked the needs 
of his family. The other talk, preparing to leave. That's it. We need to have sermons that challenge us. Because I know if I had just had a regular class, y'all wouldn't be here. So the Lord and me got together and figured we'd put it in a sermon while you're here. Amen. Amen. Because all of us will come this way. And let me say this. If you have parents that are getting older and you are responsible children, you may want to consider having power of attorney. Not to rob from your parents, but to assist your parents as they are making the transition into the next stages in life. Because if you live long enough, your day will come. And I think it's important for you to show your children how it's done. So that they understand the responsibility that we have for each other, each generation, each one reaching one. We have to do a better job. And so if you got to make that phone call to an attorney, have a conversation to put things in place. You don't want to necessarily strip your older parent from their ability to be independent because when parents lose their ability to be independent, often they don't want to hang around. So you want them to be as long as they can, but you want to be in a position to safeguard and help protect them from the spam calls and the spam emails and the spam calls and uh, letters that come in the mail. Y'all know what I'm talking about. We have to think strategically. And so I just wanted to share with you this morning this message that it's okay to have that conversation. And I would say to everyone, as you start getting older, you start deciding what you want your obituary to say. I think it's better when you do it. Help me, somebody. Than it is when you allow other folk to do it for you. Mother Ingram, I say that Mother Ingram, she had prepared her obituary at least 30 years before she made her transition. And so all she did was each, each year she would just update it. And so when she passed, I had already had it because she had already made certain that whatever she wanted to be known, she made it known. And whatever she didn't want to be made known, it was not made known. Because let me tell you something, I've sat at a many a funerals and home goings where I knew, I found out some stuff I did not want to know. <laughs> because somebody thought it was a good time to air out their grievances. Amen. I'm just keeping it real, y'all. You have an opportunity. And I know, you know, we don't want to really talk about that, but if you're a child of God, that's what you look forward to. I asked how many want to go to heaven when they die. Y'all still, y'all still ain't too quick to raise your hand. <laughs> Let me ask again, how many go to heaven when you die? Now, I'll put this out there. How many are dying to get to heaven? All right, we got two, amen. Two or three, amen. There's in a rush, amen. I ain't in no rush, let me tell you that now. I want to hang around as long as the Lord wants me to hang around. But I also understand that I'm just a pilgrim traveling through this barren land. But I'm going one day to that place of no more crying. That place of no more dying. That place. But in the meantime, before I get to that place, I got to make things right in this place. And so I want us to think about our children and our grandchildren and who we leave behind. Because you don't want them to grieve twice. 
the grief because you've passed and the grief because of the mess you left behind. Amen. And I think I'm qualified to make this statement because there's been a lot of situations where I've almost had to be the referee in a boxing match but because family members were disappointed and mad at each other. This family member is blaming that family member saying you just want them to leave so that you can get the insurance money. And then this family member saying you just want them to hang around so that you can steal what they got right now. You take care of that. You know your family. You know the ones that's cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. And you know the ones you can trust. Please don't leave that on pastor to figure that out. Amen. So I just want to encourage you all. I know it's not the topic that's that sexy. But it's important. And I'm not only going to preach you into heaven, but I'm also going to preach how you live before you go to heaven. Amen. So I don't even think I did any sweating. I didn't do any jumping. Amen. But I still preached. Amen. And this was a sermon given with love. Because I realize, and I'm not preaching something to you that I haven't done myself. Me and the wife have also had to have a conversation about who would handle D3 in the case that both of us went simultaneously, unexpected. But we don't know what God has in store. So in the meantime, our job is to help prepare them for life without us. Because I think sometimes we do our children a disservice by giving them everything they want and doing everything for them because if we leave here, I promise you, the next person is not going to do it. And they're going to think that the next person in the world is wrong when you was wrong for acting as though you may not leave here one day. It is the prayer that your children outlive you. That's the prayer. But I would also say have insurance on your children. Amen. Again, if you smoke, you can afford it. Get your little liquor liquor from time to time, you can afford it. Amen. I'm just saying, prioritize. Some things should be a little bit more important than we make it. So I just want you to all to be prepared again. This sermon was in love. And it was in prayer because it was not an easy, and I don't know too many pastors that's going to spend a Sunday morning preaching this information to you as a congregation, but I keep trying to show you how I love every one of you. <laughs> Amen. And I don't mind doing the unpopular things to make certain that you are fully aware of how life happens because it rarely happens as we plan it. We have to figure out how to work, make things work after it happens. So again, I'm hoping this sermon encouraged some, made some of us look at ourselves and maybe go home and make some phone calls and make sure your assurance is in place. And let me say this, and I'm going to leave it alone. If you've been married previously, make sure that the old benefactor is no longer on the new benefactor list. Because if you do not, it's going to be a showdown at the funeral home. Deacon Nichols, can, can, can you give me an amen? Spouse one is still on the papers. Spouse two shows up making plans. And don't have the power. Now you got spouse one, depending on how you end it, <laughs> in a position to throw one last blow. <laughs> and then spouse two catches the haymaker because spouse one was mad at how y'all ended. And instead of doing it 
in a loving way, they do it in a revengeful way, and legally they can. So I'm just sharing with you, family. Be smart. Check your papers. Update your papers. And if you know there are people in your family you can't trust around the corner, don't act like you can. Because you're going to leave your family in a world of hurt. I'm done. I'm done. There may be one here this morning who do not know Jesus in the pardon of your sins. There may be one here this morning who have not made the necessary preparations to leave here. This is a fitting sermon because the sermon talks about life after death, but it also talks about preparing your soul. So if you do not know Jesus as your Savior, you have an opportunity to make the preparations now on this side that only you can make. Mama can't make these for you. Daddy can't make these for you. Grandma, Big Mom, Big Pa. Nobody can make these accommodations for you but you. If you are here and have not accepted Jesus as your Savior, will you please come forward? Raise your hand. If you are here, you are saved, but you need a church home, somewhere to have your funeral or homegoing services from. Will you please raise your hand and step forward? And if by chance you are here, and you want to rededicate yourself because you've been out of fellowship for a while and you want to come back into good standing, won't you please raise your hand or come forward? Again, this is never to intimidate anybody. This is never to embarrass anyone. But this is always to make certain that there are witnesses that can remember. Oh, yeah, I remember when they became a part of our church family. I remember when they came back. Because it's no guarantee I'll be here when your time comes. Amen. Amen. And so if you fit in any of those three categories, unsaved, no church home, or in a need of rededication, won't you please stand, raise your hand, and come forward. Amen. Well, it would appear that we all in good shape and all our business is intact. Amen. God bless your hearts. God bless your hearts. Amen. Now we want to, I want to share a card of thank you that I forgot to share last week. But just before I do that, I want to take time out now for our giving opportunity. Amen. Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave. Amen. And I've learned that anything I call myself loving cost me something. Amen. And so if you love the Lord, there should be a cost associated with that. But that's actually seen as an investment and a blessing because God has been good to you. And so I'm going to ask God's blessings upon now our giving opportunity. There are receptacles in the back. If you want to give old school like myself, put it in an envelope. If not, there are various ways that I've listed for your edification on how to give electronically. And we thank God for the ability to give electronically because it has been a blessing to this church and to many of you. Amen. And so, Lord, we come now in Jesus' name asking you to bless our gifts our tithes and offerings that they will be used for the further advancement of this ministry and that our ability to be able to witness and reach more is available because of what we've given back to you we ask you to bless everyone who participates bless those who have and will trouble those who have and won't and lord bless those who have a desire but do not have it this is our prayer we pray in jesus name Amen. Now at this time, I want to say that on the fourth Sunday, the 28th, we are going to have our um, baptism at 9 a.m. Amen. The fourth Sunday, the 28th of this month, anyone who has recently become a part of our church family, have not been baptized, please see, amen, Deacon Ferguson and others 
uh, Sister Cookie, those that in, is a part of our new discipleship ministry so that they can have your information down. And we look forward to baptizing you on the fourth Sunday, the fourth Sunday at 9 a.m., a special spark starting time, 9 a.m. Amen. Um, also, uh, we are trying something new. Amen. So we got some. This is where we phase into. So I'm going to ask Brother Joe, Brother Coswell to play our announcements. Amen. We hope that you will join us for Saturday Sunday School on April the 20th at 10 a.m. on Zoom and Facebook Live as teacher Sister Judith Yates teaches the lesson, The Power of Persistence, Luke 18.1. The BMNW Singles Ministry wishes to invite you to Painting in the Sanctuary on Saturday, April the 20th at 12 noon in the WW Fellowship Hall of Gethsemane Missionary Baptist Church. Free registration is required. Help slow down the spread of COVID-19. Gethsemane Missionary Baptist Church offers free COVID-19 testing on Thursdays from 1 until 4 p.m. and Sundays from 11 until 1 p.m. No ID, insurance, or appointments are necessary. Got Bible questions? We've got answers. Help us prepare for our first Bible question and answer discussion panel coming this fall of 2024. You may help us by submitting your questions to office at Gethsemane02.org or you may submit them to the hashtag GMBCBQA box at the church. So that's what we're moving to. Amen. And that's why we ask all ministries to turn in your stuff two weeks ahead. Amen. So that we can capture most of that so that uh, Sister uh, Johnson can come to church and relax. Amen. And not have to worry about the wrong dates and the wrong words. But because we're still in this phase, there are a few announcements she's going to come and share with us. And then after which, I'm going to ask Brother Ned Sanders to come and to share some information about Inkster's tax abatement. Amen. Because again, we, I want you all to not only know about the Lord, but also the things that happens in our world. Good morning, everyone. Good ma morning, Pastor Duckworth and all of our associate ministers and leaders. God bless you. Today, I have a few announcements because they are quickly approaching. The Gethsemane Missionary Baptist Church Sage Ministry is excited to attend the play Annabella in July at the Detroit Repertory Theater on Saturday, April the 27th at 3 p.m., now, the, to purchase the tickets, that deadline has uh, recently passed on April the 10th, but if you are planning on attending please, and you would like transportation, the bus will be leaving at 1.30 p.m. and will be returning to the church following dinner. Amen? 
April is Autism Awareness Month. Come out to a meet and greet on Sunday, April the 21st at 1120 Middle Belt, Inkster, Michigan from 2 until 5 p.m. There will be prizes, guest vendors, and advocate advice. Now, to prepare for this event, there is a fundraiser going on, and you can purchase t-shirts if you would like for $40, donations are appreciated. Prepare to come out and support the Capital Day 2024 People to Power Move. That will occur on Wednesday, April the 24th. Now, if you read your bulletin, um, Pastor informed us this, this upcoming Wednesday, you can come out and learn more about this Capital Day. This upcoming Wednesday, I believe that is at 1.30 p.m. Check your bulletin to be sure. But come on out for Capital Day where you can go to Lansing and voice important issues, talk about important issues that plague our community or us as a people. So come on out this upcoming Wednesday to learn about the Wednesday, April the 24th, Capital Day. An investment in youth is an investment in posterity. The Booker and Florida Dozier Memorial Scholarship is currently accepting applications. Now, this is very important. Of course, it will be awarded to the June 2024 graduating high school seniors. The deadline, all applications and um, necessary materials to accompany them must be in by April the 26th. You, you, they must have the applications in by April the 26th. They said no exceptions. So if you or someone you know are planning on applying, you must have your application stapled and all of the additional information that you need to make sure that you are ready, you can find in the e-bulletin. Please don't hesitate to take a look. And next, we will have Ned Sanders, who will be coming to talk about the poverty exemption here. Amen? Amen. Amen. God bless you. That is all. This message the pastor just spoke on, I needed a year ago. Uh, my sister had a home going, and we didn't realize at the time that she owned a home, but she was the only one on the deed. And, and we, we spent $2,000 um, because we didn't know that when we could have just did what they call a ladybird deed and put it on there for $200. And then we had to go through all that. I mean, it was quite a bit. So I'm sharing it with you because the pastor spoke on it, and um, he was he was telling the truth. I'm here today because I'm a, a part of the board of review for prop property tax assessments of the city of Inkster, and I spoke on this um, in November at the city council meeting. No one is coming to the board of review, and the question you should ask is why. And Lenora, she goes to church here, and she got up and spoke about it a little bit. Um, the city successors don't live in Inkster. They live in Dearborn. And so I'm not a whistleblower, but you can figure out why a lot of you guys don't know about certain things. So today, I'm here to talk about what I've spoken to you before about. It's the property exemption application. And this is an application that Wayne County State set up for low income and people that cannot pay their taxes. And so I left out uh, on the desk there the application. So I'm trying to help us. Uh, I'm not doing enough if I can't get um, the people in this congregation to come before us. Two thirds of the board of review go to this church. So you got a leg up. All you got to do is show up. 
this program goes by income. Um, for example, two members in the, in the family, if you make $19,000, um, you save half on your taxes. You can't go wrong with this. Um, but the information, the city is not going to do what I'm doing. I'm going to help you. So I left my number, my landline, all out there on the desk. Um, if you know somebody, if you don't qualify, if you know somebody that does, have them to call me. Um, we all got done with our, our taxes, so we know what we made, right? You know that you know what you made. Just just get this form right here and, and just go down the line for income. And then if you got three members, four members, five members, it tells you what you can make um, in order to get a discount. Half off your winter and summer tax bill. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not doing enough, and I, I apologize, but I'm giving you my telephone number. I want you to know that I'm going to work with you. I'm on your side. The city keeps, needs that money, by the way, to pay the bills. That's revenue for them. We need that money also to pay our taxes. So, so um, I thank you for your time. Bless you, love, and peace. Get the, get the information and call me. And I'm going to do more. Amen. We thank for the God that we have individuals within this church that are in positions to be able to make decisions. Amen. But unless you show up, the decisions cannot be made on your behalf. We do have... Um, a card here that I meant to read last week. It was from our beloved sister, Daniel Parker. Amen. Her and her husband have moved to Arizona, but she's still GNBC's um, virtually. And so she did with a card here. She just wanted to also thank my GNBC family for your kind words and your prayers. I just want to say thank you all. Love, Sister Danielle, Danielle Parker. Amen. So we just wanted to um, thank her for that. Um, now at this time, any first-time visitors with us today? Any first-time visitors with us? Amen. Anyone here for the very first time? Amen. If not, then there is? Amen. 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 Can we get your names? Owen, and who? Omari and, okay, amen. Welcome, my brother. Welcome. Amen. 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 Now we want to come for our, our prayer. Amen. We want to come for all to prayer. We want to keep uh, Reverend Woods and the Woods family in our prayers um, as he had to make an emergency um, journey to Ohio to check on his father. And so we're asking for prayer for um, his father and the family. Amen. Amen. Um, are there others that we want to include in, in our prayer? Please state their names. Amen. Amen. Any others? Okay. Okay. Anyone else? Amen. 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 Read. Okay. Amen. Any others? Lord, we come now. You know the names that were lifted. You know the circumstances that made for us to call the names audibly. But, Lord, we know that you are a God that even knows the names that we did not mention. 
the situations and circumstances that we did not make audible. You know them, O oh Lord. And so, Lord, we ask you to touch and to bless, to comfort and to care for, Lord, to touch those that are sick, to bless those that are in the period of transition, to bless the families, to bless us, O oh Lord, the survivors. Lord, that we will do a better job of preparing for our day. Give us holy boldness, Lord. We ask you to touch every circumstance, every situation. And now grant us traveling mercies as we leave from this place that your blessings will be with us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. May God bless you and may God keep you is our prayer. Oh, I'm sorry. We have a dedication. Amen. 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 We have a dedication. Amen. Thank you for the reminder. Amen. We have Rayla. Raylan. Amen. We have little Raylan that's going to be dedicated this morning. And so we're going to ask for the parents, grandparents, godparents, cousins and them. Amen. And everybody else in the family. Amen. To come forward. Amen. So that we may dedicate. Yeah, we can at least get two chairs. Amen. For the mom and dad or the mom and grandma. Amen. 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 For those that are exiting out, we ask that you ask it out um, quietly. Amen. We're getting ready to have a dedication. Amen. A baby dedication. Amen. So we want to be respectful to this part of service. Amen. It is after service, but it's still a part of service. And so we're going to ask if you are not going to stay in witness that you would quietly leave out. Amen. Amen. Make room for the family. Amen. Amen. waiting on you. Amen. Amen. Are we ready? All right. That means that we are paying attention. We want to first of all say to the parents, uh, this is the best move that you can make. The best move that you can make is to make the early investment of dedicating your beautiful daughter back to the Lord. And this is just a symbolic way of saying, Lord, guard over and protect. And we are making a commitment to making certain that she understands God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, Christianity, church, and all that good stuff. And I want to say to the parents, your responsibility is to bring Raylan up the right way. You are familiar with it. You know about it. To the grandparents and to the rest of the family, the extended family, your job 
is to be a village around young Raylan. That as she grows, that you look out for her, you pray for her, and always put her best interests at heart and to the forefront. And it starts with prayer and making certain that she makes the right moves because it is the job of Satan to destroy. But we know greater is he that is in us than whatever the world has to offer. And so we're getting ready to pray now for her as we dedicate her back to the Lord. Lord God, we are grateful and we are thankful for this precious life that you have allowed to come through this man and this woman. We thank you, Lord, for this child and all that she is going to be. We thank you, Lord, for life, health, and strength you've given her. Asking you, Lord, to put a hedge of protection around her, Lord, to protect her, Lord, from all manner of people, those who have no interest in her well-being those who would try to staffle her, Lord, those who would try to discourage her, O oh Lord, those who would try to make her feel as though she's not good enough. We come against all these works, Lord. And Lord, we ask you to surround her with people in her life that will speak power, that will speak positivity into her life, Lord. But Lord, who will also correct her when she's wrong and will guide her where she needs to go. And then, Lord, bless this church that we will be an extra layer of protection, an extra layer of prayer, an extra layer of direction and instructions, O oh Lord, that she will find solace in these doors, within these walls, O oh Lord. Lord, that she will be a part of our GMBC family and she will receive the love that all are entitled to. We ask you now to bless her parents, guide them as they try to direct and love her and lead her and parent her, O oh Lord. Bless the grandparents, the great-grandparents, the cousins, the siblings that may come later, and all that's involved in her life. We ask now for her successful school and beyond as a mother as a wife whatever you have planned for her Lord whatever you have planned we're thanking you for it right now and Lord we thank you for this family that have gathered here as her first line of defense that you will bless them that they will have her best interest at heart and mind we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Where's Sister Sheila? Oh, okay. Our in-house photographer. Yes. Oh. Amen. So we are officially done, but if the family want to hang around and take more pictures, you're more than welcome to do so. May you all be blessed. Amen. Amen. If you were blessed by the worship experience and would like prayer to give your life to Jesus or to join our GMBC family, please go to our Facebook page and inbox us or complete the New Discipleship form on our website, gmbcwestland.org or even call the church at 734-721-2557.
Also, we thank all and encourage others to give if they are blessed by our worship experience. There are various ways to give your tithes and offerings. Bill Pay, Giblify, PayPal, and Zelle. You can also mail them to the church at 29066 Eaton, Westland, Michigan, 48186. Don't forget to like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Instagram. We pray that what you just experienced was a blessing for and to you. Our continued prayer is that GMBC is in your life and that the spirit of liberation will inspire your life. Thank you.